name is Justin. I'm a graduate student at UNC Chapel Hill in Maria's Videos Lab. I'm here to talk about um, how a sort of mating by an obliquely transmitted cultural trait can potentially reduce hybridization and increase um, trait of genetic <coughs> divergence. So, um, this model I'm going to present is mainly motivated by the question of whether learned bird song contribute to speciation. And uh, we know that, as at least um, that's what I inferred from the empiricist, is that um, most of the in songbirds, most of the songs are learned obliquely, meaning they are learning from unrelated individual of the previous generation. So most of the time, it's juveniles in the nest hearing the um, adult neighbor's song, and then they just learn that song. And then they can also, oh, um, on top of just learning that song, they can also learn to prefer that song so that later when they choose their mate, they may um, choose a mate that sing a song that they have heard they listened to when they were little. So um, it's common in birds, but pre previous study um, have shown that sexual selection does not affect the trait when it is obliquely transmitted because regardless of mating success, a male can always, um, an adult male can always um, teach his song to an unrelated individual in the next generation. So sexual selection, because it's mainly acting on males, it's not going to affect the frequency of that trait. But what is not known is whether genes that are associated with this cultural trait can be indirectly affected. So what I mean by that um, association is um, what's called gene culture association or phenogenotypic disequilibrium. It is completely um, analogous to linkage disequilibrium between genes, except that now one of the, the genetic locus is actually a cultural trait. So um, yeah, this statistical association can potentially um, form, I think, because learn, first of all, learning is spatially constricted. You cannot learn from individuals that are infinitely far away from you unless you're on the internet, but birds don't use internet. So um, there's going to be some local co um, cultural traits, and in the case of birdsong, it's often called birdsong dialects. Um, another potential source of local cultural trait is because the cultural traits can also be um, locally adapted. For example, in cities where there's a lot of um, low frequency ambient noise, there are evidence that shows that high frequency vocal signals are more fit for birds. And another example is found in human languages. Um, there's a study that shows that tonal languages like um, Vietnamese or Cantonese are uh, more likely to develop in humid environment because of um, physiological constraints on our um, larynx. So, yeah, when there are local cultural traits, then um, it would be statistically associated with local genes. And that association can potentially allow selection on the cultural trait to affect the, um, the genes. Um, another thing that can potentially contribute to all of this is drift. But the role of drift is less obvious because it has a lot of um, different, in different things it can do to the system. For example, if there's some kind of allopatry, it can potentially increase divergence, but also it can potentially lead to the loss of polymorphism. Um, when there is gene culture association, then um, cultural drift, the effect of cultural drift should um, indirectly affect the divergence of genes as well. And also, lastly, there is um, this thing called cultural trait turnover, which is the replacement of cultural traits over time through drift. And I think this one is particularly interesting because it allows cultural trait to change over time while potentially still maintaining the difference between subpopulations. So um, that leads me to my first of the two hypotheses. If there is local genes and local cultural traits maintained by the fact that learning and reproduction is spatially constrained, then that should create gene culture association. And this gene culture association should allow selection, divergent selection and sexual selection on the cultural trait to indirectly affect the genetic locus, leading to more genetic divergence. So, and here's another way to let's see, show. Okay, here's another way to show it, which is um, if we have um, genetic locus A and B, and um, my question is whether it's possible for there to be a cultural trait C, 1 and 2, that are 
um, statistically associated with the genetic locus, thus allowing the genes to remain diverged. The second part of my hypothesis is um, if there is drift and mutation, um, I think it will both directly and indirectly increase um, local genes and local cultural traits through uh, both both just through um, drift and some there's if there's some kind of um, allopatry there, and also through cultural trait turnover, and then that will lead to more gene culture association, and as a result, um, genetic divergence. And, oh, I see. Uh, so I missed something. Um, when you have increased gene genetic divergence, then of course it goes back up to mean there is more um, local genes. And um, even though sexual selection does not affect the cultural trait, but divergence selection can still affect it. So that should also lead to more um, local songs. So for the um, cultural trait turnover, um, I'm specifically looking at whether it is possible for a third cultural trait to come in, replace the original cultural trait in one, part, one of the patches, while still maintaining the gene culture association. So to test those two hypotheses, I use a population genetic model. I start with two patches with some migration between them, and then um, oh, the, the two patches just to provide the um, spatial structure. And then um, there are the two genes, A and B. And then um, they are under Kobzanski Muller incompatibility, so they're selection against hybrid. If this is all I have, then migration should just mix them, and then they're not going to remain diverged unless like, selection against hybrids is infinitely strong, so that all of the migrants are killed instantly when they mate with the locals. And then, um, the thing is, I have a cultural trait here. So the cultural trait is um, under divergent selection. And also, it is the basis of assorted mating through phenotype matching, which I'll explain in a moment. And then um, there is also cultural mutation and random drift. And what I'm trying to figure out is whether divergent and sexual selection on the cultural trait will be passed on to the genes, thus allowing the um, genetic locus to remain diverged. So this is the life cycle. There are three stated stages that I would like to explain in a little more detail. Um, one of them is viability selection. So as I just mentioned, um, the genes are uh, under the Pazansky Muller incompatibility. So you can see in uh, magenta, the two genotypes that are high, that represents hybrid have their um, viability reduced by SH. And then there is divergent selection on the cultural trait C. So um, you can see cultural trait 1, 3, 5, etc. is adapted to patch 1, and then cultural traits 2, 4, 6, etc. are locally adapted to patch 2. The reason I have multiple cultural traits of, with the same viability is because I want to see whether it's possible for drift to, to allow one to replace another. Then this is um, sector selection. I assume polygyny, so sector selection is just acting on the males. And then um, mating is based on phenotype matching, so that um, females prefer males with whom they share the same trait by a fact over um, other males by a factor of one plus alpha. So if alpha is zero, it's just random mating. If alpha is very high, then they just prefer to mate with individuals that females just prefer males that have the exact same cultural trait. And then um, this is oblique learning. So oblique learning is occurring only within individual patches, and that's how the cultural trait is transmitted. And then I also assume there is no bias. So all, regardless of the, um, the genotype, all individuals are just, the, the, just learning whatever cultural trait that is present in that patch. And then um, the probability of learning a particular cultural trait is just the frequency of that cultural trait in that, in that patch from the previous generation. So here's an example. Um, if we had um, the frequency of juveniles with genotype big A, big B, and cultural trait 1 is just equal to the frequency of juveniles with genotype big A, big B multiplied by the frequency of cultural trait 1 in the adult population after accounting for a cultural mutation. And uh, the cultural mutation is basically when you learn something wrong or when you innovate, so you're not uh, learning it exactly like it is taught to you, but you're changing something. So it's just like genetic mutation, but it's cultural. And oh, this example is when there's only two cultural 
alleles, but if, you, if there are more cultural traits considered, you just extend that to include all of those mutations. And um, one important thing to note here is that oblique learning, because as, as I mentioned, there's no bias, so um, gene culture association within individual patches actually becomes zero right after this oblique learning, because regardless of your genotype, you can learn any cultural trait you want. So um, it's, there's no gene culture association. However, if you compare across the patches because um, because the, the cultural traits are different across patches and the genes are also different, so there is globally gene culture association. And so when migration occurs, then the migrants are likely to be different both in culture and genes, so that would allow gene culture association to exist within individual patches. So um, this, are, this is the simulation conditions. I start with all genes and traits diverged, so this is like a contact zone. And then I start with only one cultural trait in each patch, and all other cultural traits will just arise through mutation, and I'll see if drift can allow those new cultural traits to replace the ones that's originally there. And I run this for 5,000 generations. So um, in a moment, I'm going to show you a figure that shows support for the first hypothesis. So um, on the horizontal axis is the um, strength of assortative mating preference, alpha. On the vertical axis is genetic divergence as measured by linkage disequilibrium, and then there will be multiple lines representing different um, levels of divergence selection. And here's the figure. So if you compare between the lines, you'll see that stronger divergence selection lead to more genetic divergence. So and remember, this is selection acting on the cultural trait, but it's leading to a stronger genetic divergence. And then also at intermediate female preference strength, which based on previous study we know actually leads to the strongest sexual selection, you also have the strongest linguistic disequilibrium. So um, this is the, for the second hypothesis, is the effect of drift and mutation. And um, the, on the horizontal axis now, instead I have the measurement of the divergence of the cultural trait. So this is the figure. Um, you can see that even though there's a positive correlation if you compare between levels of divergence selection, if you look within individual color, there is really no correlation. And within individual color, it's the same level of divergence selection. So every difference is just caused by drift. And there's no positive correlation. So meaning um, drift is really not contributing to this process. It's just causing things to get more diffused. Also, you might notice there are some dots that actually have a black X on top of it. Those are the places where um, cultural trait turnover is occurring, and it's more common if the um, drift is strong. But when drift is strong, you also lead to the loss of polymorphism. So um, cultural trait turnover does occur, but it's not very frequent. And if it does occur, the, it's, it's also possible that um, polymorphism will be lost. But however, it is interesting to note that those dots with the black axis just as high as those dots without. So um, when cultural trait turnover does occur, um, it is not going to cause, um, it's not going to lower linkage disequilibrium. So what's the punchline? Um, first of all, if you're interested in understanding um, the effect of learned cultural trait on speciation, I think it's better to just observe the mate choice and viability of those cultural traits instead of trying to find a population level correlation between genes and culture. Because first of all, the correlation can be caused by geographical limitations, so it's not imply causation. And um, also, it, the correlation itself may be difficult to observe because oblique learning will temporarily remove any um, gene culture association at an in, at, within the individual patches. And also, um, it, cultural trait turnover can lead to high cultural variation within individual patches, making it difficult for you to find the cultural boundaries. And with that, I'll, I don't think I have any time to take any questions, and thank you.